Uh, hello, my name, my name is Ilola, and I will continue with my memories. I don't remember, was it late 80s, late, early 90s, late, was the Soviet Union was already over war? It wasn't yet, because at that time I was around 10 years old. A lot of things already started somewhere at around 88, but uh, there was this time and I remember uh, when the shops didn't had so it probably was still like the end of the 80s with empty shops we didn't had like all you know all the 80s there was no really problems like i said in my childhood memory videos and we had food in shops we didn't have a huge variety but then there was this time when we didn't really had anything and there were all these lines, uh, queues outside the shops. And then after that, there was this time that we had an abundance of everything. So it kind of like, it was really interesting. And I don't know at which, I don't remember at which point it was like, we don't have anything. And then finally, we have everything. <laughs> there was this time when we, certain things you could buy only a limited amount and each person had like this kind of like food cards or something for some stuff and what i remember it was uh, soap i think yes uh, alcohol there was limited on alcohol on cigarettes yes this probably was the time when uh, in the middle of when it's all changed when the country didn't yet had mm, this um, like kind of relations with other countries where you could import something. The country just started to exist, something like that. So yes, oh, I don't know what else was it. I definitely remember it was sugar, bread, maybe. Yes, some food items you could buy. You needed not just money, but you needed also, also this card. Because without that card, nobody will sell you. So you had this limited amount of stuff which you could buy. But, and why I am telling this story? Because what I remember for sure, it was sugar, shortage of sugar. Despite that we really had the sugar factories, I don't know what happened. Why suddenly everything stopped working? Because if you have a factory, sugar factory, it could continue to work. I, I, I really, I, I don't know. But and why sugar was such a big deal? There are two reasons. One, people were still doing, making these uh, preserves like jams and stuff canned fruits and everything and you needed sugar for that i don't know how long was this period was it a year or more or just months i don't know uh, but people had no idea when they will be able to buy the sugar so nobody knew what will happen next and what will be after a month or year or something so yes uh, people needed sugar for this stuff so it's not well you could have yes on these cards maybe enough especially if we had we were like poor people family children also had their cards the cards i don't know what what is how is it called but like this paper things where you can buy like one kilo of sugar. I don't know also how, probably it was a kilo a month per person, probably. So we could have these four kilos, let's say for a month, which could be most likely enough for daily consumption, like tea, coffee, and maybe some biscuit or pancake or whatever. But if you wanted to, especially for if it was a summer and you wanted to, preserve the fruits for the winter 
then you needed a lot of sugar. But that's actually this is boring, okay? This what I'm telling you now is boring. The interesting part is, uh, I already mentioned that we made also alcohol at home. Not, not at home, not in a town, or in a flat, but in a farm. And if for beer, maybe you don't really, I don't know, maybe you do need some amounts of sugar, but not as much. The, for that summer gone thing, basically homemade work. You actually do need quite a lot of sugar and this four kilos definitely were, were not enough. And why this alcohol was good? Why? Why, 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 why do we need so many alcohol? Because this actually was used as um, money. You could, first of all, you could sell something, but I don't think we did. But if you needed to hire somebody for work in your farm, because well, we had our farm, and now when we got our lands back, we could have even bigger farm, which means we needed maybe sometimes occasionally, not every, on daily basis, occasionally for some bigger works to ask some people to help. This was normal thing. Pe people all around did it. Uh, and a lot of people were happy to help. And even before these times, like in the 80s, people were all, maybe not all village, but like neighbors going to each other's house and helping with some stuff like uh, take, uh, like pick, pick, no, not pick. Okay, let's say pick <laughs> potatoes from the field because it was a huge field. Uh, all neighbors went to one house on one day they did it and then another week well people went to another house but in the 90s these things a little bit changed people all didn't wanted to do anything absolutely for free anymore because of course people people were struggling and they and, and they, they they wanted to drink water well apparently this is what i am I, I understood now. <laughs> yes, we, well, actually, yes, it was a problem. People were drinking in the 80s. People were drinking in the 80s. But in the 90s, I think they were doing it even more. And this uh, homemade stuff was, yes, really used, was useful for these people who wanted to drink and they didn't have, yeah, apparently, they didn't have money to buy alcohol. But they wanted to drink, so they went to the people's houses who needed some helping hands. And in exchange of drink and some food, they did these jobs. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about that, this is absolute. But then, well, this was the time back then. Nobody's doing that now, obviously. And everybody knew that nobody really have uh, money, or not huge amounts of money. This, uh, this, <laughs> this is like kind of like sounds like some some kind of slavery, but no, it's, nobody was forced. So it it was. Um, uh, both sides were benefiting from this, I guess. And how, well, the most interesting thing for me, how we managed to steal with this sugar limitations to do all this alcohol stuff. We could buy these kind of like candies or something. There was no limits on different type of sweets and stuff. Which is interesting, and we realized, well, these things are made of sugar. Well, most of them was mostly almost pure sugar with a little bit of coloring and sort of taste of something, but mostly it was maybe at least 90% sugar. 
Sugar that was paradise. We had these huge bags of these candies, like hard candies, of course, not chocolatey or something. And my job was to melt all this stuff in a huge like pot of hot water. This this was really interesting experience, and of course, for me as a child, I had all these sweets, and I could eat as many as I want. No, well, okay, maybe not as many as I want, but yes, I still had to leave something in that pot. But yeah, th this was uh, I don't know how many people could experience something like this in my life <laughs> like uh, me sitting in the kitchen with this huge pot of water and just dissolving all the sweets in that water uh, with this big spoon and if you want you can just like eat like that Yes, this is one of my childhood memories. If you did something like this, so you can write it in a comment, but I really doubt. There were a lot of people who did this. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye.